Hello, Garage Army. I hope everyone had a great week. This is Friday Night Chats with Garage Geek. So I hope you're all doing well. Um, right now, the skies over Los Angeles is very strange. It was all black clouds. And right now I'm hearing a little bit of thundering, which this is so strange for Los Angeles. So if you hear some thunder, um, that that's what it is, thunder. And um, I hope it rains. That'll be cool. I have a I actually have a busy weekend. I have a, a training at school tomorrow, and then I'm meeting a friend uh, for lunch in Little Tokyo, where I'm going to, I wanted to meet there because of, um, I wanted to do some stationary shopping. So again, YouTube is having a very bad influence on me. Uh, I want to look at, I've been watching YouTube videos about stationary. I love stationary, and every once in a while, I'll go on a stationary uh, kick. So there's a couple of things that I want to do with stationery. I um I like lists. And so I would like to make some books of lists and I uh, keep track of them and check them off. Um I I do it digitally, but it's just so so much more satisfying for me to do it on paper. I don't know why. I just I like it that way. Um so I'm going to be looking for some some stamps that maybe I could stamp the year. Um also some some uh bullet point journals i do have one that i like but it's blank paged i would i would like to get one with lines uh and just look at some of the neat uh gadgets that are out there for stationery um especially from japan now of course they'll probably be more expensive uh there's an art supply store near here in pasadena it's not actually that far i should also check that but i won't go there tomorrow maybe during uh, my week off so i have one more week of school and then I have a week off, which is so nice. So one week of school, except for Thursday night, is going to be the killer because it's going to be um, back to school night. So that means we have to stay seven. So that's a like a continuous 12 hours at work, uh, pretty much. I, I get there at eight. Uh, well, we have to start at eight, but I, I get there usually like 7.30. So I leave my house at seven. So I'll just say seven to seven, I get home. Um, probably because of that time, the traffic will be bad. So it'll probably take over an hour to get home. So that's a very, very long day, uh, for me, especially when you take into a fact that you do a lot more talking than usual because, you know, you're talking to all the parents and it's a real strain on your voice, especially at the end of the day. Uh, anyways, enough about work. I'm going to, um, uh, move on. So Sunday, uh, I hope I have the energy because, I really, really want to go to um, a convention that's in Glendale. That Glendale is a suburb of Los Angeles, in case you don't know. It's not too far from me, about 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and they're having um, a vintage paperback convention. And I just want to go, not necessarily to buy, although I probably will if the prices are good, um, but just to check it out. I've never been to one of those, and it just seems really interesting. Uh, so I'm, I'm, uh, I've also been getting into vintage paperbacks recently. So I'm very excited about that. Also, stick around later. I got um, s uh, some comics in the mail, and that I won by auction. And I, I was going to show them off in this video, but I thought I would do an unboxing. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do that. But the way that things usually happen, that might actually post before this. Uh, but anyways, I hope you'll watch both. So look forward to that uh, if you watch this one first. Let me go ahead and get a drink of coffee. So uh, a, lot, a lot of stuff happened this week, culturally. So I was getting ready for the Academy Awards, and I actually did an Academy Awards show. Uh, well, here we go. Time to, to bring out my pictures. So I actually did an Academy Awards pre-show. Now, the reason I did that is because I wanted to try out the technology of uh, live streaming um, and being able to share my screen. Now, I did that many times in Zoom, but I had never done it on live stream. And I was having trouble. I kept starting it and then stopping it because I couldn't get it to work. Finally, Sleepy Reader jumped uh, in and he helped me. I was doing uh, like one little thing wrong. And of course, that threw me way off. And once he showed me that, I was I was good to go. Um, but that was a really interesting show because I had I had one person who came in who was a diehard Poor Things fan, and like he was seriously into this movie, and he did not like um, the fact of the Academy Awards and 
Um, of course, I, I, I like the Academy Awards. Uh, I know I, I know Ben Rankins. I don't think he's the, the type that likes the Academy Awards. For me, um, it's not about who's better or who's not. It's all about being exposed to more uh, movies. I know that's not what Hollywood probably sees it as um, because it's very judgmental. Right. But for me, it's it's uh, it's a time of year when you can get really excited about film in, in ways that you, you wouldn't normally. And then you're exposed to all these different types of movies uh, in genres that you might not normally watch. For example, I don't normally watch too many uh, documentaries and I very ever rarely write short documentaries. But around the, the the time of the Academy Awards, I always make it a point to watch uh, those as much as I can. Uh, so. I went through the entire Academy Awards list in that show. I'm not going to go through it again. But I am going to talk about um, two that um, I saw uh, on Saturday, or one was, was late Friday night. And th let me talk about the short one first. So I, I watched the Academy Award nomination best uh, documentary short film. Uh, I, of course, I don't know how to pronounce that, but I'm just going to say uh, Nai Nai and Waipo. And this was about two older ladies and how they keep each other um, feeling young and, um, you know, just alive and what their daily lives are like. And, you know, the, the realization of their own mortality and looking back, but trying to remain positive. And overall, this is a very short one. This is only 17 minutes, but it's thoroughly enjoyable. Um, I highly recommend that you watch this. It just, it puts a smile on your face to see these two women, you know, living their lives uh, to the fullest. Uh, so, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Now, the next one that I watched was Poor Things. Now, this one was late because they had just added it. My dog's drinking. They had just added it to, I think, uh, Hulu. I think it was on Hulu. And... Uh, I didn't realize it, and I was like, I was scrolling through, and I said, oh my gosh, Poor Things is on. Uh, and so I, I went ahead and watched it, even though it was way over two hours. Um, and it's a very, very good movie, but it's very strange. In fact, uh, it's so different from all the other movies on the Academy Award uh, nominated list. Uh, it was a breath of fresh air, but I do have to warn you that it is a very, very strange film. Uh tons of nudity like so much but it serves the purpose of the film it's not gratuitous it, it's there for a reason um i i i highly enjoyed it like i said uh, i don't want to give away what it's about uh stellar acting hilarious parts uh the even the you know the the major actors and minor actors everybody did well the cinematography in this is beautiful there's going to be like steampunk, I dropped my list, Steam elements of steampunk and Tim Burton all over the place, gorgeous sets, uh, beautiful backlit backgrounds. Uh, because it's kind of a fantasy, they could use color schemes that aren't normal, and that just made the movie like really stand out. Uh, it's, it's long, I don't mind that. Uh, <coughs> it's beautiful, it's strange, uh, just, just be ready for something different when you watch Poor Things, but it's a very, very good movie. Uh, definitely deserving to be on that Academy Award nominated list. All right, so another movie that I watched was Jason and the Argonauts. Now, the reason I went ahead and watched this, this movie's from 1963, I believe, with, uh, there's a Spanish title. Uh, this one, um, is with Ray Harryhausen special effects. Um, there you got some, you know, a picture of some of the things in the movie. That's it. That's actually a pretty cool poster. Uh, one of the reasons that I went ahead and watched it is because I had finished the book finally, right? It's, it's in uh, poetry uh, form. And this was written by Apollonius of Rhodes. And I don't even know the year. Third century BCE. So how many... Third century, 20th century, 21st, I don't know, at least 2,300 years old or more. Something like that. I mean, this is old. <laughs> uh, but this was so much fun. I'm not going to go through it now. I was just, you know, very happy to, to finish this because I had been 
reading this for so long. Um, I, I'm glad that I finally got it done. I enjoyed it. Um, and then, of course, I wanted to watch the movie. Now, there's actually another movie uh, based on that book, uh, which I think was made three years later, and it's like Jason and the King, and it's it's got elements of the book in it, but all out of order. Like, this was, was actually... Um, this was supposed to be part one and there was going to be a part two. However, at the beginning of this, there's a scene from the end of the book. And so uh, they, they jumbled things up. But overall, this is a really fun movie. The special effects are great. Here's a, here's the cover of the VHS. That's a pretty cool cover. Pretty cool scene in the movie, too. Um, so I think... The, oh, what was that thing called? The Triton? Um... So this is definitely Harryhausen. You can see how they use this rock as kind of a dividing for the uh, special effects. And you can see the people running. But for the time, these were gorgeous special effects. And you know what? They still hold up. They're still a lot of fun. Um, here's another really famous scene that is repeated in uh, Sinbad right there. they I think Sinbad is after this. And I think there are even more skeletons in that scene. But here... Here they are. Uh, here is uh, Jason fighting uh, a group. I think there were either six or seven uh, skeletons. It's a great scene in the movie. Here is, I think, the DVD cover. And you can see that it's from the Ray Harryhausen uh, signature collection. I, I think I have this. This one actually might be a VHS. I have a VHS set of this, I think. Uh, here's another picture. Uh, unfortunately, it it's not too clear. If I if I move it too close, it's uh, blurry. But he is trying to get the golden fleece, I think, from this branch. And of course, it's very different because in the book, uh, Medea helps him get the the golden fleece. But here he's fighting this uh, this three headed serpent, I think. Um, but in the, in the book, Medea gives uh, it gives the serpent a potion to help it fall asleep. Um, 1963 movie, uh, not too long, so much fun. Uh, you know, it's one of those Saturday matinee movies that I saw as a kid, right? And so, you know, uh, this is definitely a, a, a popcorn uh, special effects kind of fun adventure movie that's almost into the territory of uh, sandals. What do you call that? Sword and sandals type movies? Oh, Medea in this movie was actually in um, Star Trek, the original series, too. Uh, I recognized her face, and then I looked her up, and she, she was in one or two of the episodes. And she may, she may have been the, the woman that is green, that with green paint, where Kirk is kissing her, and then she turns into this, like, succubus creature. I'm not sure, but she's definitely in um, a Star Trek episode. Take that with a grain of salt. I, I could totally be wrong. All right. Uh, another book that I read was Mammoths at the Gates by Nevo. And this is in the series uh, that was that is up for many uh, Hugo Awards. It's a, it's a short a short book. I think this is the third and the third or fourth in the series. I'm trying to get to the one that was uh, nominated or won, but a couple of them did. Uh, this was a dip for me, although it's not a bad book. I just, uh, fantasy is not my thing. And so for me, a little bit of it goes a long way. And for me to keep reading a lot of these books in a series, uh, they're great books. They're very, like, I could, I don't have anything bad to say about them. But for me, they're just not what I'm so into. And I'm just, probably I'm getting a little bit too much. So I'll probably take a little bit of a break before I go on to the next one. But I will definitely keep uh, reading them. So, and it's not just this book. I remember last week I, I reviewed, uh, uh, like the third or fourth book and the one about the doors, you know, the, the kids who go through doors and then come back and, you know, they're all, they're all messed up for the rest of their lives because they want to always get back to their doors. And that's an ongoing series too. There's like eight or nine of them. So, um, yeah, but Mammoths at the Gate was a very entertaining read. Uh, you get more into the characters. You actually go back to the village uh, where the main the main character of the book uh, grew up and you get some background and then um, uh, you get also get a uh, background of uh, one of her companions. Her companions is a bird 
and the birds I, I think I mentioned this before but the birds are have uh uh is it called eidetic memories I'm not sure if that's the right word but it's basically they can remember everything that they're told word for word so they're good because the 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 person in in the book is a scribe and uh it's a they character sorry I shouldn't have done that it's a they. <laughs> sorry it's a main character that that I didn't mean to be respectful by doing that. Okay, but it's it, uh, and I shouldn't say it's a they character. My goodness, um, <laughs> it's a they character. The main character is pronouns. Pronoun is they. <laughs> it's difficult for me to remember all that. It's hard. Okay, so the main character's pronoun is they, and we go back to uh they they theirs village they they's village. <laughs> <laughs> and um the the they the they characters uh has a bird uh, and these birds like i said are more than just birds and so we learn more about the birds and their lore and 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 then you also get a lot of stories and uh the whole series is about storytelling and um each each book has its own separate themes uh but they all work together um and I'm going on and on for a book that I didn't really like that much, but these books really are good. It's just that for me, I, I need a break from them. <laughs> I need a break. Uh, okay. I've been watching the Resident Alien uh, series that's on, uh, I think it's on Hulu right now. Um, but a new, I guess a new comic is coming out. Of, of this and I actually have the collected first edition I need to buy the second one I need to read these because the show is actually quite funny it has its dips it's not consistently amazing uh but it's fun and uh I, I would like to read this series and there's a new one starting so I should hop onto that um oh here's a I, I have a couple of like like internet things that just made me laugh so I'm gonna share um so there's a person who does mashups and this, this, <laughs> I don't know why, but this cracked me up. So it's like if e ACDC wrote Staying Alive, so they have like a mashup. But I mean, <laughs> that would just, that thumbnail cracked me up. It's <laughs> oh gosh, <coughs> it's making me laugh now and I, I'm like losing my voice. Oh my gosh, that just, uh, the colors, the horns. <laughs> His, you know, that's that's right from the video "Staying Alive," where they're walking down the street. Oh my gosh, too funny! Now this thing cracked me up to no end. So <laughs> that's a place where you like change your baby's diaper, <laughs> and then someone wrote "Place Sacrifice Here." <laughs> Oh my god, this I was scrolling on Facebook, I think, and I saw that, and it just, it really cracked me up. I don't know why, why do I think baby sacrifice is hilarious? I don't, I don't but that is just so funny. Imagine going into the bathroom. Imagine going into the bathroom and wanting to put your, change your baby's diaper, and you saw that. Oh my god, I, I don't know why. You're probably being, this guy's crazy, but that cracked me up. I mean, <laughs> people on, on the internet, it's like they don't have anything better to do. <laughs> okay, uh, next. Um, I'm going to kind of jump because I watched a really, really interesting video. I found a new YouTuber and he's all about language. And he was talking about the Shavian alphabet and this is something that i'm definitely going to be uh going more into um this is kind of fascinating so it's basically uh, a replacement alphabet for english to get rid of a lot of the problems that english has with its spelling and its sound system and they did a contest and this one won and this one uh takes care of all the problems in English through the writing system and there are like 40 I forget how many 48 characters uh and it was pointed out that's a lot of characters to learn right but actually uh I'm looking at my beard actually if you learn um the English alphabet 
uh, you have uh, not only 24 lowercase, but you have 24, sorry, 26 letters. The Okay, 26. So that's actually, what, 52, right? 26 and 26. You're actually learning 52 characters. So this is actually less. Um, the whole explanation of it, the history behind it. And then George Bernard Shaw actually wrote a book in the shaving alphabet and it's a dual language. I can't find this on eBay and I want this. I keep looking. Um, it is a penguin book. Uh, it was probably only put out in England. That's probably why. Um, but I would, yeah, I would really like to get this book. And it, yeah, like I said, and it's got an economy to it. So for example, the shave, the sa Shavian side, you'll see how much less it is than the English. Uh, but with all the same meaning, it, it's pretty fascinating. Uh, okay. So that was a little aside. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is, oh, there, uh, let me talk about, I was uh, doing my order of comics and I actually bought this one. Look at the cover of that. Now that's a comic book and you say that lady's ass is bare. Come on. The only thing is that that tells you it's not, that's how they get away with it. Whose pants are ever that tight that they're going all the way up in the crack like that? Is is Am I missing something? I mean, I don't go around staring at ladies' asses, but no pants do that. And then this picture, like the color of the pants, just everything about it, I had to buy it because this is such a gross injustice. I mean, that just screams nudity, but they get away with it because of that. I thought, I was like, I, I had to buy it. So I did. I'm waiting for it to arrive. It probably won't get here for a couple months. Um, this is one of those Disney uh, X-Men, uh, Disney uh, tributes to comics that they're they're putting out. And this is, of course, a very famous um, early X-Men issue. And I really, really want this. But like I said before, a lot of, a lot of comics... Uh, they're making them incentives. So they're making them, you know, cost a couple hundred sometimes, even for these comics. And this one they said was like $200 or something like that. Uh, but there was, there was this, a similar comic one or two down without a cover and it looked all the same. So I took a chance and I, I put that in my list. Um, I hope I'm able to get this because I think that is just an adorable cover. Okay, I talked about those two. Let me go back. I want to talk about... <clears throat> Where's... Sorry about that. Oh, here we go. I I started this, but then I had to return it. Uh, I just didn't get it finished. And I was able to get it back this week. And I went in and finished it. And this is Richard Stark's The Green Eagle Score. So this is a Parker novel. Um, I didn't realize it. I thought it was like the seventh. This is actually the tenth novel. So I finished ten... Parker novels. This one is just as good as all the others. There's no letting, like, slowing down. These books are so good. I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, a list. I know you're just dying to see this list. So, there you go. There's the first one, The Hunter. I, I reviewed all these. Uh, the Man with the Getaway Face, The Outfit, The Mourner, The Score, the Jugger, the Seventh, the Handle, the Rare Coin Coin Score, and finally the Eagle, the Green Eagle Score. So I was pretty surprised that I, you know, I've read ten of these. I think there's like thirty or thirty four of these. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep going. Um, I'm, I, I, I'm enjoying this series so much. Uh. What else do we have? The Green Eagle score. Oh, I want to talk about this book. So this book is Benjamin Labatou. I think that's how you say it. And When We Cease to Understand the World. Now, this was nominated uh, for the International Booker. I And when this came up, I didn't... I, I couldn't remember why I put this in my list. I actually think somebody recently recommended it so i went ahead and put it in and then my friend told me oh you know that one was nominated for the booker after i'd started it um i loved this book wow so 
it's it's a little bit controversial. So it's 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 got like five chapters that are loosely interwoven and they're all about scientists and and kind of madness and and how scientific inventions are often you know used f f to deadly effect later but can also be used for good after it's kind of this cycle um this the first chapter of this book is pretty harrowing um oh wait i forgot something he mixes fiction and nonfiction, which was at the beginning, I thought I would not like that. I'm like, either tell me the truth or don't embellish it. But he sets about writing, uh, I think this is what he's doing. He's He sets about writing um, fictional accounts of real events. And he tries to put as much history as, as possible. So it's kind of like, I don't know why this isn't just called historical fiction. Um, and... I think throughout the book, like it starts off factual and as it goes through, it gets more and more fictional. Um, it's a very strange way of writing. I loved it. I I, I thought it worked. Um, the stories in it, man, the first chapter is just it's 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 pretty gruesome. It's harrowing. Um, you know, you know, a lot of stuff about concentration camps and, you know, all that stuff is harrowing. And, you know, <clears throat> And before the concentration camps, like gas used in, um, in 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 you know the trench warfare in World War One, like like all of this like harrowing descriptions of you know uh, not only like that but just cruelty to humans and animals. Um, that stuff is always hard for me to read about. Um, but but this book is fascinating, especially after I just watched Oppenheimer because I had a little bit more for my brain to latch onto. Because Oppenheimer is mentioned a few times in this book, and they're all scientists like that preceded him or or came after, like all scientists do. But I mean, immediately before him and and after, and and how they were, uh, you know, affecting each other, throwing off theories, how the community treated each other, like if there was a theory that that actually was, you know, came to be popular, but at the time, uh, people ridiculed and how, what effect that would have on the actual scientist, how, you know, lonely they feel, how, um, you know, secluded, how, how it could drive them to the brink of madness. And, and it seems, you know, the way it's described in here that so many of these scientists actually go mad because they're envisioning w what they feel feel is this subatomic world and for for many of them what they're envisioning is very dark like when you take quantum mechanics and you actually think it through it seems like it's so hopeless right like you know a black hole where you know if everything is sucked into it and nothing can escape it and you're imagining this and this is the ultimate you know eventuality of everything like i i don't know it's it was a very fascinating read uh, and I, um, I, w I would actually really like to read this one again because it had uh, so much in it. Each chapter was so good. Um, so, yeah. But it's strange because it, it is a, like a kind of mixing of styles. So, yeah. I, once again, Benjamin Labatou or Labatit. Le, Le, and When We Cease to Understand the World. Uh, I think... I think I covered everything, and I did that under 30 minutes. That was pretty good. Let me go ahead and promote, although I made a video recently, I'm promoting my uh, my live stream that will be the last Saturday of the month. Um, I will be putting a, a link probably uh, in a week or a week and a half. So we are reading um, The Arabian Nights. And like I said, it's a long book. I'm only 100 pages into it. And this one, the first volume is 900 and some pages. Um, you don't have to read it all. don't have to finish it. The, the graphic novel is Monsters by Barry Windsor Smith. The movie is Andrei Tarkovsky's Stalker. Get ready for some irradiation. And... Uh, Wynton Marcellus's Blood on the Fields, and I have to tell you that I've listened to this at least 20 times already, and I am totally digging it. That is a spoiler. Okay, um, yeah, I got a busy weekend, so...
uh, I'm, I'm going to actually make another video of, uh, of of an unboxing, so I'm going to go ahead and jump into that. But I want to, as always, thank all of you for your support. And um, yeah, I, th I think that's about it, right? So everybody have a great weekend. Um, I, I look forward to seeing all of you at the Vintage uh, Paperback uh, Book Fair in Glendale on Sunday.